Hello to all you beautiful people out there. Regnella over here bringing you the next episode of Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. In today's episode, we are going to be fighting one of my most favorite monsters of all time, the Baryoth, the pseudo wavern in the tundra. And for this quest, I am bringing the same stuff that I brought against the uh, the Rathalos. So my full Rathian equipment over here with my Bishop Talon with seven points in Psychic and a new weapon, which is the Waven Blade Fire, which you can craft from both Rathian and Rathalos materials. It's been upgraded with increased attack power going from a 160 base attack to 175 base attack and it has decent sharpness. So nice weapon to have, especially against an ice based monster. My skills include the uh, Feline Attack Up Small, the Feline Riser, and Feline Courage. And uh, well, these are all my other attacks and I can finally make use of my Fire Attack plus one. It's, uh, it's been several quests in and it's, it's nice to be able to use this now. All right, let's get started and uh, start the Berioth quest. Where is it? Oh, right here, the Lost Expedition. All right, since this is in the tundra, you're going to want to bring some hot drinks. It's cold as balls out there. And speaking of which, it's cold as balls over here in real life, too. It is freezing today. But, you know, that's winter for you. Okay, what we got over here? Yeah. Oh, I forgot the Berioth can uh, encase you in ice called the uh, snowman status. So we got to be on the lookout for that. Okay. Got some additional hot drinks as well. Okay, and he's in area two according to my detectability. Great. So, what's the first thing you need to know about Berioth? This guy's fast. Not quite as fast as Nargakuga and probably not as uh, fast as the Tigrex, but this guy is still fast. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is disable his speed, and we'll get into that in a moment here. Right now, cutscene time. We got those beautiful little popos just minding their own business. And then we got this asshole uh, looking like a saber tooth tiger or saber tooth cat if you just want to be wrong and boring. All right, there we go. Ugh. At least the mom and the baby got away. But uh, Barry off here, uh, it's, uh, it's feeding time. Okay. So the first thing you're going to want to do is break those wings. This monster is very agile on ice. And as a result, he can be difficult to hit and he can really quickly get the jump on you. So what I am going to do is I'm going to get out of his roar range and I'm going to set up a pitfall trap first. Any trap will really work on this monster, but you know, this is what I, uh, I clicked on first. Okay. So those spikes, you want to break those spikes on the monster, and once you do, a, he will have a much more difficult time staying connected to the ice. So just, uh, I'm focusing on one wing. If you just break one wing, that will make a world of difference. Oh boy, didn't want to do that, but... Uh, right now for the shock trap. Okay. And what is Misty doing? Probably something that is not productive. All right, come here, Barry off. Hmm, he's taunting a lot. He doesn't usually do that. All right, come on. Come on, get into the trap. Uh huh. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Guess I'm gonna have to focus on the other wing. Oh boy, that's not good. Yeah, just uh, stay put. Oh, and it looks like he's a bit more immune or resistant to the uh, the shock trap as opposed to the pitfall trap. All right, both wings are broken. So that is a really good thing. So watch how this monster will behave when he tries to uh, sideswipe you. So uh, right here, or actually maybe not, because he's now in the air. And <laughs> there's Misty in her snowball status. Okay, come on. Oh, yeah, and those, uh, those tornadoes of his, too. Hmm, he's not sliding around like I want him to. Ugh, that's, uh, that's very frustrating. Oh, here we go. 
So that's a dive bomb attack that he could do, and he could very quickly recover from it. But uh, in this case, since his wings are broken, he has to pause and recover a bit in order to in order to get a grip on the ice again. But oh wow, he's <laughs> he's really not happy with me. Oh no. Come on. So the next parts I'm going to focus on are the head and the tail whenever I can, or when, more accurately, whenever he decides to let me. Oh, there we go. You see how he kind of, uh, it was like he lost his footing? Well, that's because his wings are broken, and he can't do a whole lot of good right now. Oh, man. Okay, I was a little bit too far away on the flash bomb there. See, if his wings were not broken, then he'd be able to very quickly follow that that uh, that movement up with an attack. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Always want to make sure those monsters get stunned in midair. That way they come crashing to the ground and you have more of an opportunity to uh, hit a specific spot without them moving still. Oh, no. Oh, boy. So let me get into something with uh, Baryoth that you might not quite uh, realize right away, but uh, Baryoth is one of the few types of monsters in the Monster Hunter series that's classified as a pseudo wavern. Now, his technical classification is a flying wavern, but he's more of a pseudo wavern. Pseudo meaning like, but not quite. So he's very similar to regular waverns, but he has more cat-like features. Is he shares this, that that same attribute with the Narcacuga, as well as some other monsters, uh, with the exception of the Tigrex, because Tigrex looks like a dinosaur made out of, uh, well, hate. All right, there we go. And as a result, pseudo waverns tend to be very fast and good on their feet. And one of the things you kind of don't want to do, or at least with most pseudo waverns. If you, you don't want to flash bomb them unless you know you're going to have uh, either the ability to make consecutive strikes right away or if you just need a breather. Because the speed of a pseudo wavering can really cause you to uh, to stress out because they're always in your face. Thankfully, the Baryoth is one of the few pseudo waverings out there that uh, can be directly impacted by uh, breaking his wings, which I really wish more monsters were affected like that like the more that they take damage to certain parts of the body the less likely there are the they are to uh, be able to use that uh, body part effectively i know we sort of have that with the tail on most monsters but if we had more situations where uh body parts being broken uh have more of a consequence then that would uh i would think that would make fighting monsters a little bit more interesting all right I have a feeling that Baryoth is running out of uh, energy, so he's probably going to need to eat here pretty soon. And judging based where, he, where he's at, oh, okay, he doesn't uh, uh, he doesn't have access to any herbivores in this area. Well, with the exception of Bolfangos, but uh, Bolfangos, I don't categorize them as herbivores. I categorize them as assholes. All right, so. Yeah, I'm not quite sure if I'm in the hitbox to take off the tail, but I'm doing pretty good damage there, so I'm just going to keep trying to hit where I'm hitting. Uh, not today, Misty, because that was that was some bullshit that you just did there, cat. All right, get rid of this Bolfango. It is very nice to have both his wings broken. That way, you don't have to deal with his speed. We do have to be careful of that ice breath, though, because ugh, you don't want um, yeah, you don't want that uh, freezing you solid and then being forced to use a cleanser. All right, Baryoth is not looking too good. He rests in Area 6. There is a platform that we kind of go around every single time we're in Area 6, and he sleeps on top of that platform. He just hangs out and does his own thing. But it looks like he is going to stop off in Area 2, possibly to get after one of these popos. If that is the case, that's a good thing. And then we can uh, take some more chunks out of him. 
Oh, yeah. It looks like he's going for it. Oh, he looks exhausted. Oh, actually, maybe not. None of the Popos got hit. All right. Don't mind me. I'm just going to come after your tail here real quick. Oh, okay. Well, didn't take off the tail, but, uh, you know, everything else went pretty smoothly. So the strategy here is to break both those wings as quickly as possible, then either aim for the head or the tail. Once those wings are broken, then this this fight becomes much, much easier. And you can use traps as much as you like in order to make sure that he stays still. Pitfall traps are always pr uh, preferable over shock traps, but shock traps are quickly set up. But anyways, that's going to do it for me and this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're interested in any of my other content, be sure to smash on one of those annotations that will be featured at the end of this video. And as always, I will see you again next time. Take care, people.